like okay now we look at the example for Euler sparkling of column in this example one with the three meter wooden rectangular column has the dimension shown so we need to determine the critical load if the ends are assumed to be pin connected so e for the wood is equal to 12 gigapascal and the yield stress for the wood is equal to 35 mpa in order to calculate the critical buckling of column first we need to determine the section properties of the column so first we need to calculate the moment of inertia of the column which is the ixx and iyy uh, by inspection the column will buckle at yy axis which is at minor axis of the column so to calculate the critical buckling load of column we will use the iy which is the moment of inertia at y y axis of the column so for the ixx uh, we use the formula bh cube over 12 where b is the 50 mm and h is equal to 100 mm so we got the ixx is equal to 4.17 times to the 10 to the power of 6 millimeter to the power of 4 for iyy the formula is to calculate uh, moment of inertia at y axis is equal to hb cube over 12 where the h is equal to 100 mm and b equal to 50 mm so for moment of inertia at y axis we got 1.04 times 10 to the power of 6 millimeter to the power of 4 so next we can calculate the critical buckling load of the column so for the effective length of the column with the end condition is both pin supported the k is equal to 1 so for the effective length of the column it is equal to the length of the column then we can calculate the critical buckling load using the Euler's formula which is pi square EI divided by KL square or also we can use LE square because KL is equal to LE then we got the critical buckling load is equal to 13.67 kN for second example we have hollow rectangular column and A992 steel column has a length of 5 meter and is fixed at both ends if the cross-sectional area has the dimension shown, determine the critical load. In order to calculate critical buckling of column, first we need to calculate the moment of inertia. Same as the previous example, the column will buckle at yy axis, which is the minor axis of the column. Because this column is hollow rectangular column, so when we need to calculate the moment of inertia for this column the moment of inertia for outer dimension need to be minus with the moment of inertia for inner dimension so formula for the iy um, iy is equal to hp cube over 12 so um, we need to calculate first the moment of inertia for outer dimension and then we minus with the moment inertia for inner dimension so for IY, we got 0 0.896167 times to 10 to the power of 6 meter to the power of 4. Then we can calculate the critical buckling of column using useless formula. So for both end fixed column, the effective length of column is equal to 0 0.5L. So we got the critical buckling load of column is equal to 272 kN. In order to check whether the Euler's formula is valid to be used, we need to, we need to calculate critical buckling stress and compare with the yield stress of steel. Next, we move to the example 4. The A36 steel W246 member shown in figure 13A is to be used as a pin connected column. Determine the largest as your load it can support 
before it either begins to buckle or the steel yields given the stress yield is equal to 250 MPa and also E is equal to 200 gigapascal. From the appendix of the book, the section properties for the column is given as shown. The area of the column is equal to 5890 mm square and the moment of inertia at major axis which is Ixx equal to 45.5 times 10 to the power of 6 mm to the power of 4 and the moment of inertia at minor axis which is Iyy is equal to 15.3 times 10 to the power of 6 mm to the power of 4 First, we need to calculate the critical buckling load using Euler formula where E of steel equal to 200 gigapascal and I, we use the moment of inertia at Y axis where the buckling of column will occur. So, the effective length of the column is equal to 4 meter because this column is pinned at both ends. So we got the critical buckling load is equal to 1887.6 kN. In order to determine the axial load that the column can support, we need to know first the critical stress of column using formula PCR divided by the area of column. So from this calculation, we got the critical stress equal to 320.5 newton per millimeter square or equal to MPA. This critical stress of column then compared with the yield stress of steel column which is 250 MPA. Since this stress exceeds the yield stress, the load P is determined from the simple comparison. Using the yield stress equal to 250 MPA times with the area of the column, then we got the value of P which is equal to 1.47 mega newton. In this example, a partially restrained strut of steel with E equal to 200 gigapascal with total length of L is equal to 6.5 meter is constructed of circular tubing with outside diameter D equal to 100 mm. The strut must resist an axial load P is equal to 150 kN with a factor of 72 with respect to buckling. The axial load is also equal to, to the P ultimate or the maximum axial load. So then we need to determine the required thickness of the tube and the critical buckling stress. Then uh, we first calculate the effective length of the column with uh, the effective length of the column is equal to 0 0.7 L. So we got the effective length of the column is equal to 4.55 meter. Then we need to calculate the critical axial load using the factor of safety formula which is expressed by the P ultimate divided by P allowable where the FOS equal to 2. Then uh, we got uh, the PCR which is a critical buckling load also equal to the P ultimate which is um, 300 kN. Then we need to calculate the moment of inertia using the Euler's formula where the value of PCR equal to 300 kN as calculated uh, before and then the value of E which is the Modulus of elasticity for the steel is equal to 200 gigapascal and, uh, and effective length of the column is equal to 4.55 meter. Then we got the moment initial for the for this column is equal to 3.15 times 10 to the power of 6 millimeter to the power of 4. We know that the moment of initial for circle is equal to pi d to the power of 4 divided by 64. So from the moment of initial calculated before, it is equal to the total of moment initial which is 3.15 times 10 to the power of 6. 
So as stated in the question, this column is circular tubing column, which is hollow section. So to calculate the diameter or D or the also uh, equal to the thickness of the column, we need to minus the outer diameter with the inner diameter of column. Then by solving this calculation, the required thickness of the column is equal to 12 mm. For the next example, it is given that an equal angle 120 mm times 120 mm times 10 mm L section is to be used as a fully restrained column. Fully restrained column also means that the column is fixed at both ends. If a factor of safety of 2.5 against buckling is required, determine the maximum load of the column can carry. Find a suitable length for the column to resist the above loading given the E equal to 200 gigapascal and uh, yield stress equal to 250 MPa. So uh, for the section properties of this L section, uh, the area of the L section is equal to 2.32 times 10 to the power of 3 mm squared. And I minimum, which is IYY, is equal to 129 times 10 to the power of 4 mm to the power of 4. First, we need to calculate the maximum load uh, of the column using the yield stress, which is, uh, is equal to yield stress equal to uh, P max divided by the area of column. So the yield stress is equal to 250 MPa times the area of column which is 2.32 times 10 to the power of 3. So the P max we got 580 kN. The critical buckling load is calculated to determine the maximum load that the column can carry before it starts to buckle. The critical buckling load is equal to the maximum load at yield point times the FOS so that the column can carry 1450 kN before it begins to buckle. In order to determine the suitable column length to resist the critical buckling load, we can use the critical buckling load equation which is equal to pi square EI divided by LE square where the effective length for fully restrained column is equal to 0.5L. Then we substitute the value of E which is equal to 200 gigapascal and I and the value of PCR that we calculated previously which is 1450 kN into this equation. By solving this calculation, the suitable length of the column to resist the above load is equal to 2.65 meter. You can watch extra example in YouTube associated with the Euler's buckling of column using the link given in this slide. We have finished topic 6 which is the last topic for this subject. Wishing you good luck and thank you.